So you're probably thinking, hold up, Power BI Desktop, that's only on Windows. And you'd be right. And this is one of the frustrating things when you think you can use lots of other Microsoft suites like Excel, Word, PowerPoint, amongst other things that you think they would have made one that you can actually use on a Mac. So how do you actually get Power BI Desktop on your Mac? Well, there are many different ways, and I'm not going to go down the route of the terrible Power BI service version, being able to do editing in that. I'm going to show you how to do this by using what is technically a virtual desktop. Now, there are different programs that you can use. There's ones that are free. There's ones that are paid for. And I'm going to be covering Parallels, which is actually paid for on a yearly subscription but you do actually have a free trial that you can try out to see if you get on well with it before you actually purchase it and the other great thing is generally and i've been in the same boat i've not actually paid the full price for it which is around a hundred dollars because every time i've come to renew it it's always been around black friday and i end up getting 20 percent off and at the moment they have 20 percent off it might not be by the time i release this video but you will find that sometimes they actually have offers. So you can actually wait and then get the money off. And also the other good thing is if there was any other deals further in the future before your subscription comes up, you can just buy another one at the reduced rate to be able to actually get the offer. And then it will just add it on to the length of your subscription. So to install Parallels, all you have to do is head over to parallels.com. I put a link in the description as well. It's not affiliated, so it's just a complete link. So you can use that. Otherwise, just search for it and then you'll come up with this particular page. And then you've got the buy now or try free. If you go to the try free, you get to the trial where you just put an email address. They'll send the a link, but also you'll be able to just download from the site. If you want to just purchase it, and then you just go to your buy now, pick the one that you want. So they've got the pro edition here. Also, you can get a version that's cheaper if you're a student. So you can actually get it for less. And that also includes 50% off what the amount would be there. And then once you've purchased or done your free trial, you'll get an account which you need to just sign up for. Once you signed in, you'll get the option to be able to download and then also see your active subscriptions. What you do when you download it is that you have the different downloads here. So you've got your automatic installer and then you've got your parallels Mac image, which is just a drag and drop. So if we just go for the download, save, open it up, have the parallels here, open. This then starts to install and then it asks you to use your password and then the windows will start up. Now, every time you come out of it, it will give you this thing where it's showing a suspended. Also, when you first log in, you also get this notification saying about you don't have a certified Windows 11, but that's fine because all it is, is this is just literally a virtual desktop. And the good thing is once you're logged in here, this is just like Windows. So you have all the information that you need and then you can access your files. So if you've got stuff in your documents or your downloads, you can see the information here. As you can see, I've got this here. So I could open up this particular Excel file. I have Excel loaded in so we can see Excel here in this file which will show you how to add that to Power BI Desktop. To actually install Power BI Desktop, the best thing to do is go to Microsoft Store. This needs to install once you first install as well, so this might take a little while. But once you're in, you can just find Power BI Desktop. So I've got here, and then all you do is just install it. I already have it installed, so I can open it. And this is still all within my Mac, which as you can see here, about this Mac, my Mac. And then as we can see here, we can just go, let's select something, but let's just do blank report for now. You have all the visibility of how you want to get data in, just like you normally would. There you go, just gonna get that Excel file that I just had open, click on here, go to transform data. You see everything in the Power Query edit view, and then you can just load it in. And then we can go and see the data here. You can see the data model here. And let's say if we just wanted to just drop in some data. So let's go job title and then the annual salary. Let's just make that into a bar chart. And you can see all working. And then just to prove that this is exactly the desktop that you're using on a Mac. I'm going to open up one of the reports I've created in the past. And if you want to know how I did that one, I've linked that in the description below as well. And here is a report that I created and all other reports I've done in the past as well. This is all on the desktop, all functions. And then if I was signed in, I could publish as well. And it all works exactly how you would do if you were using it on a Windows PC. Now, one other thing I did find was I use OneDrive quite a bit. And one thing I couldn't get 
was if I used OneDrive in here, this wouldn't install correctly. And because it doesn't show up within here, there's no sort of link apart from if you actually install the whole suite. So if you get the Microsoft 365 suite, that will include it. You can download everything, but it won't properly work unless you actually have the subscription. So when I tried to download it from actual Microsoft, if I download the 64-bit one, it gave an actual error saying, oh, this does not work. So if I download this, open file, and you go, yes. And you get this message where it says unable to install it because you need the 32-bit. If you go back and then download the 32-bit one, still get the same message. And there seems to be an issue with the most up-to-date version. So what I did find was someone had the same issue here and there's an old link that you can use, which I've got this one here. And I'm also gonna link it in the description below. This gives you access to an old version of OneDrive that actually installs onto this. And I think there might be other things that are like this. There might be other cloud-based drives that might need this particular thing. It's just a timing thing. It's where stuff has been updated and then hasn't been updated within parallels yet. And therefore you're gonna have this mismatch. So the handy thing is you can find solutions online. It took me a little while to find this one. So if you end up being a OneDrive user and you are still having trouble even after you've installed the 365 suite, then try use the link that I put in the description below and that will sort out your problem.